think being an individualist in music is uh, it's a good feeling, you know. And to some people, it comes so naturally. You know, in the classical world, it, how long does it take you to know what a Stravinsky piece sounds like? You know, it comes on and you go, that's Stravinsky. Well, how do you do that with, with music paper and people you don't know playing the notes? Uh, so individualism is a, it's inherent but maybe you have to keep your eye on the ball along the way, too, so you don't start uh, working other people's stuff into you. So anyway, one of the luckiest things that happened to me in my life was ending up in Cambridge, Massachusetts. The folk scene up there, there were some key people who did tunes, old songs, etc., but they weren't copying them the way later people were able to do. A lot of what went on for us was we probably didn't, couldn't figure out what certain people were doing. I don't know. But especially Eric Von Schmidt sort of set the tone for me. He was the first guy I heard, a white blues singer, who poured his heart out in a certain way that was incredibly individualistic. He came up with ideas on the guitar that were completely his own even though he loved the material he was singing from. And this, this set the thing for me, for, I guess, for the rest of my life. I've always tried to get the spirit of some uh, ballad or some folk tune or whatever and then find my own way to do it. I really respect people who can teach guitar and go out and play exactly like Blind Blake or... Blind Lemon Jefferson or something. I just think it's amazing what they can do. But ultimately, I'd rather hear Blind Lemon and Blind Blake do it. And uh, But it's just it's just a different style. That's more of a, to me, that's an, a classical approach to music. It's as if it's written and you learn how to do it. I've never, uh, first of all, as I said, I've never been able to do it. And I ran into these great people up in Cambridge and it, and it put me on a life where I look for my own thing in all this stuff. And that has to do with vocal style, too. I think I started out singing, uh, being quite influenced by certain people, like Booker White and Lonnie Johnson, and eventually Don Redman, and eventually Sippy Wallace. And I think around the time Sippy Wallace started to work on me is the time I started to learn how to really sing. She enunciated. It was something that I hadn't thought about. Uh, we, we went for this uh, Delta sound and these blues singers and got very wishy-washy in the way we handled rhythm and, uh, and pronunciation and enunciation. And I just said to myself, Listen to her, she's speaking, she's talking. And I started to realize what I could do with words. And uh, that became part of my thing. Later when I played with Paul Butterfield, we got wrecked one night and he was playing me Levon Helm singing. He said, listen to this guy, man. And he was trying to teach me something, but he wouldn't put it that way. He said, he's leading the band. He's punching all the places that need to be punched with his voice. And that was another thing that worked on me. I do that much more now, no matter what the context is. I help the group or I help somebody who I'm playing with. So this has been my journey with, with what I was given in my voice. There is a natural thing in there which I'm quite happy to have been given. Uh, but I think I've kept my eye on, on the people who got through to me, you know. And uh, I don't know if that relates to the guitar as well, but the guitar is the same thing. I just have always tried to find my own little stuff.